So I've given you in the last module an expression of what's taking place in terms of practical politics. You, you read both of the chapters on uh, progressive imperialism on the one hand and liberal internationalism on the other hand. And you begin to see an America that is very much at work throughout the world uh, trying to take what it has and export it abroad or replicate it abroad, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a newfound kind of love of things which are American. And that newfound love also is in uh, need of power in order to make that expression known, to make the impression known abroad. Well, I, I noted earlier that the tradition of romanticism opens us up to the brave new world we can create. Pragmatism says that if we want truth, we have to make it. We have the ability now, we think, to make it. But where does progressivism enter the picture? And what does progressivism amount to as an idea? I would argue that the most important idea that has shaped the United States that you live in is the progressive liberal idea. So the progressivism, which I'm going to take up in this discussion and going through Herbert Crowley's The Promise of American Life, has been an idea that has influenced every aspect of American life, the American church, American education, American politics, et cetera. So for those of you who are progressive listening to this lecture, you'll probably say, okay, I definitely believe uh, with what Crowley is arguing. I never thought about it that way. But but follow closely, progressive or not, because I'm going to suggest to you that this is kind of it becomes the defining feature of, of who we are. So how is progressivism, I would, how is progressivism different than the republicanism of the founding of the Declaration of Independence and, and of the Constitution? So how is progressivism different from liberal uh, constitutionalism? Liberal constitutionalism takes a look at life and says, okay, we can make life better by trying to create a just administration of society, but there's no way that we can make life perfect because human beings are imperfect. There's no way that we can make society perfectly good because human beings aren't perfectly good. So the best thing you can do is have the governed consent to a set of laws whereby they flourish but those laws aren't put into place to perfect human nature. Those laws are put into place to allow people uh, to have a livelihood, uh, to worship as they see fit, etc. So liberal constitutionalism sets a very kind of a low bar, low but hopefully um, bar that we can reach for mankind. The progressive says that bar that was set by the founding was too low. It enabled there to be such a thing as slavery. It enabled there to be such injustices that are in place uh, today. And the progressive says, even looking at the world at the end of the 19th, early 20th century, there's a whole bunch of injustice in America. Even having happened to fought the Civil War, there's still injustice here. Why is there injustice? There's injustice because we didn't understand the promise of American life or the promise of American democracy correctly. So I want to turn your attention to the beginning of Herbert Crowley's essay on page 1065. He says the following, the best method of approaching a critical reconstruction of American political ideas will be by means of an analysis of the meaning of democracy. So he wants to reconstruct the way that we understand ourselves, and he argues that the best way to do that is by re-examining what the promise of democracy is. So here, note something that I said about pragmatism. The pragmatist says that something is true only if it makes a concrete difference. And here Crowley would agree. We live in a political democracy but that democracy is only true to the degree that all things become democratic. All things become equality. All things become made equal. And that hadn't happened in the United States by the time of his writing this essay. There are still inequalities present. So here he gives us an excellent coverage of that group of people who he's trying to supersede, that group of thinkers who he's trying to supersede. One of the great things about Crowley in this essay is he knows the past well. He knows the ideas that have shaped America well. And, and he says uh, of the past and how we have lived that 
uh, yes, we're dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And he boils down that phrase to simply mean the following. Uh, the founders and Lincoln believed in equal rights for all and special privileges for none. And they established a government right, that aimed towards that end. But the problem, that government, unless it is intentional, that government, unless it is interventionist, will never realize the promise of American life. And I'll give you an example. Crowley says, we're all born into this world, but we're born into this world with different advantages or disadvantages. Just by nature itself, some of us have the ability to succeed or to not succeed because we're limited by our own individual nature. So nature doesn't dole out equality when you look at humankind across the spectrum. There are whole sets of inequalities. Some are faster than others. Some are brighter than others. Some are more beautiful than others. Some are more entrepreneurial than others. There are a whole bunch of different factors that go into the creation of our natural person that point to inequality. But then take into account circumstance. You know people who have been born into a circumstance that is lush, that is somewhat easy. It's not hard. Maybe that person that you know uh, had never a problem affording anything. And you know other people who have had to uh, fight through a great challenge to get where they are. Crowley says, not only does nature dole out inequality, but circumstance doles out inequality. So here you have this liberal Republican constitutional government that wants to treat all equal, but if they come into the human equation unequal because of their nature or circumstance, they're going to come out of that equation unequal as well. So all the disparities that you see in American life at the beginning of the 20th century are disparities because government hasn't done enough to create equality. And Crowley says the following. What do we need out of American government to fulfill the promise of American life? American government must reverse the inequalities that are inherent within nature and within circumstance. It must actively and purposely aim for a more progressive realization of equality. The promise of democracy can only be true if we are actually more equal with one another. So what the progressive, like Crowley, is going to call for is a much more interventionist state that tries to undo the injustices of nature or God or circumstance. Go back to that paradigm that I've employed often in these last few sessions. What the progressive aims for is to use the powers that are at our disposal as human beings to recreate a world anew, to make it more equal. That means perhaps setting aside God, setting aside nature, and employing our nature and our art to make the world just. In many ways, a well-meaning attempt, but also when you set aside reality, nature, and God, and you think yourself a God, might you run into some troubles thereafter.